Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. We have a ton to talk about with the, I almost said new moon, but that's because I'm still vibing from the energy of the new moon that happened in the sign of Aquarius, which was just a few days ago. How are you guys feeling with that energy, by the way? I have been very much in, I guess, product productivity mode, very inspired, and just kind of catching up with some of the things that it is that I set intention for, for my life, for myself, they manifested. So I've been managing two of pentacles energy, juggling it all, um, and doing pretty well. I got to give myself some credit this time. I, I've definitely been doing better than I have in the past. So shout out to progress. So as you guys can see, we have the chart pulled up. This format has been working pretty well for you guys to help you follow along and kind of see what it is that I'm seeing. So why fix what isn't broke? You know, if it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Is that which, how do you say that saying? Um, <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and dive into the astrology chart. I have my tea here, so I'm ready. Feel free to pause this video if you need a moment, but I'm definitely 100% ready. Also, make sure that you stay to the end of this video because we have some tarot cards here and Oracle that we'll be shuffling and pulling from. And I asked you guys in my stories on Instagram if you wanted to be contributed in the collective reading for this week to go ahead and give the video the comments well in the stories there's like a little handout section little offering hands so i'm definitely going to be including you guys in that reading for those of you guys that participated so let's go ahead and dive right in so first things first, one thing that is standing out to me is the fact that we are in Aquarius season right now. The sun is right here. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. The sun is right here, sitting in the sign of Aquarius. There is a square that we are leaning into with Uranus, the planet of surprise and unexpected developments in the sign of Taurus. Now, right away, this can create some radical departures in our lives, things that it is that we don't normally see coming. So this is something that we want to keep an eye out for. I will talk about this a little later on in the video about this week because this transit is going to build as the week unfolds. But because it's not perfect doesn't mean that we're not going to be feeling it. Chances are you are going to be feeling it this week. It can come in the form of surprises with communication because we also have um, Mercury. Mercury is going to be moving as as just like the sun into a tight square with Uranus as the week unfolds. And we don't wait until the exact day that this happens. We keep an eye out for it all the entirety of the week, right? Because it's not the exact day that it often, the, the chances of it happening are high, but we're going to be feeling it high all this week, right? It's highest at the point where it's about to be perfect. The transit about is about to be perfect, but it's high all throughout the week, okay? So we'll see some interesting conversations, communications, messages, as well as some brilliant ideas that we'll be um, downloading from the realms, right? From our from our higher intuitive and intellectual selves, depending on how your chart is aligned. Oh, someone just said, I love you, Jess, on my YouTube channel. I love you too. Thank you so much for that. That really just kind of like warmed my heart. Okay. Um, for those of you guys that don't think I see your comments, I do. I do be seeing them. So with the energy transiting um, starting off with us in the sign of Aquarius, again, this is delving into the realms of detachment, which can be really tough. I have always kind of felt like it's interesting that February 14th, like Valentine's Day, falls in the sign of Aquarius because Aquarius energy isn't really known for being romantic at all. It, it feels like such a displaced day. However, I do want to tell you, make a note for the 14th because the moon is going to be entering in the sign of Taurus. And we'll talk about that a little further too. On the 14th, the moon will be entering in the sign of Taurus. And you're going to see some um, 
hopefully some pleasant surprises when it comes to people investing their time, their energy on you or even their resources. And again, we'll talk about that in a little later. Okay, so as the sun is transiting through the sign of Aquarius, starting off this week, we want to practice a little bit more detachment for the purpose of awareness, right? For many of you guys, you may not think of Aquarius in this way, but this is a wonderful time for you to get the bigger picture, like gain the bigger picture for your life, for your plan, and maybe even uh, get more organized using this transit to get more organized to be able to use your time more efficiently and constructively. It's this ability, especially with Mercury transiting through the sign of Aquarius, Sun in the sign of Aquarius, that um, Mars, well, Mars is in the final degrees of Capricorn and will finally enter into Aquarius on the, um, on the 13th. So until March 22nd, but this is going to be a wonderful time for you minimal to start this week off with organization and to get the bigger picture so that you can understand where you want, where you want to prioritize your energy for this week ahead. For me personally, I'll be using it to get more organized because there's a lot of things on the calendar, right? This is also a wonderful time to connect with friendships, community, social media, making, um, moves when it comes to those areas, those realms. Aquarius naturally rules those things, those energies. So you may find yourself being hyper-focused on that, right? So on the 13th, that is going to be the, a Tuesday or this Tuesday, Mars finally enters into the sign of Aquarius. Now Mars is right here. At the time of me pulling the chart, Mars is in the final degrees of Capricorn. Why? Because it's moving slowly into the sign of Aquarius and Aquarius is right here. So we are moving from having more practical, realistic approach to life and relationships and things and energy and money to now all of a sudden we're going to start focusing on our personal views and our morals, what's important to us. Do the energies that are around you right now, do they align with your personal beliefs? If for some of you guys, you may feel like you actually need to separate yourself from what others are doing in order to honor your authentic path. One thing I love about Aquarius is that it is always going to be authentic. It's always going to be real enough that there is no fluff. Usually there's no fluff. You pretty much get what you see with Aquarius if you even see it, right? Because Aquarius can be, again, in the realms of detachment. Now, this is a really interesting transit and we're going to be feeling this until um, March 22nd. We're going to be feeling this until March 22nd. This is going to be tough. In the, and by tough, I mean it's going to be challenging. If you're smart, you're going to use this to challenge yourself and understand why you're doing what you're doing or if you are someone who is kind of following the masses, kind of following the flock. Don't let that be you. There's a lot. I, I was talking about this last week. We're going to enter into the realms where following the masses is going to be very problematic. I even see a highlight of celebrity energy here where it seems like celebrities are people in the public eye. It, you just won't be able to do the right thing. It always seems like you're going to be offensive or people who normally love you. I don't want to say that they turn on you, but they're questioning morals and intentions. I hate to bring this up, but were you guys watching the Super Bowl? Um, I was, briefly, until my TV provider decided to collapse. <laughs> and the whole TV programming just kind of went kaput. It was such an interesting turn of events towards the very end of the Super Bowl. It wasn't just me. There's a lot of people who are using the same, same TV provider. Wow. But anyway... Um, Usher did the halftime show and did an amazing job. And then shortly after Beyonce Virgo announced she, she, her intention was to break the internet once again, it ended up drawing mixed reviews, right? Now I'm going to leave my personal opinion out of this, but this is a sign of what it was that I was kind of talking about last week, that if you are intentionally trying to draw attention to yourself when you in different ways, right? This just doesn't seem like the time to be doing that, where if it's easy and effortless, like if, if you're just doing what you are great at, not to say that this isn't, um, no, that's not Beyonce, because Beyonce is definitely doing her thing, and we all know that, but it seems like trying to intentionally draw larger audience and, and so obvious will backfire. I, I don't know another way to say that. I hope I'm not offending anybody here when I'm saying that, but 
kind of learn from astrology if you can. It's all about planning, right? It's all about planning and divine timing. So if your timing is off, even though you're doing what you excel at, if it's too forced or if the timing is off, it's not received in the way that it could have been and kind of diminishes the good that is that you're doing or what it is that you might be giving, right? What you're contributing. That's what it is that I'm kind of seeing um, collectively, but definitely for people who are in the limelight, who draw, whose job it is, is to draw attention. Do what you do, do it well, and um, leave it at that, right? So I, I definitely am seeing that. Also, there's a lot of um, looking at the charts you don't, for the rest of us, right, just regular, regular schmegular people living our day to, our, doing our jobs, living our day to day lives. These are transits where following the masses and watching what other people are doing is not something that is supported by the astrology uh, transits right now, right? This is one of those things where everyone seems to, like lemmings, kind of be running in one direction. You want to be able to detach from the masses and detach from the collective as much as you can in order to have your own perspective. And you may even find yourself asking, why, why am I doing this? Why am I spending so much time, so much energy, so much effort and giving this my attention? I know everybody else is doing this. I know that this is what is trending right now, but do I need to follow, follow the herd in this case, right? Do I need to follow what everyone is doing? And everyone, you may not necessarily feel this at the start of this week, but as the week unfolds, you'll definitely, for, me, for most of us, you'll definitely start to see how this applies to you. If it's not the collective, if it's not the masses, this could be your friend circle. This could be social media. If you're involved in social media or using social media for marketing, it can also have to do with relationships, connections, just something here where you might need to separate from others to gain a more authentic approach for what is in alignment with you and everyone this is going to be different right some people might hear here might be um uh what is it like um passionate about things that you don't necessarily feel passionate about right getting angry about things or emotional about things that you don't relate to or that you may not necessarily feel it in the same way right i also want to encourage you it was with these types of transits, especially this week, even though Chiron is not being aspected here, it still needs to be factored in. So look back on the Chiron retrograde transit. This happened July 23rd of last year, 2023, and it ended December 26th of 2023. Now Chiron, and I'm looking right here for those of you guys that need to see, boop. Chiron is considered the wounded healer right? It gives its wisdom. It gives us awareness into or for the sole purpose of us healing ourselves, whether we do this solo dolo or whether we incorporate the wisdom of someone else in Aries. It highlights our self-awareness, our individuality, our leadership abilities or inabilities and our identity. And Aries actually is naturally ruled by Mars. And now that Mars is transiting through the sign of Aquarius, we want to keep an eye out for all of these, what, what Aries, what's going on in Aries energy definitely with Chiron. Now, when Chiron was retrograde, there was this hyper focus again on who we are, our own individual egos, how we identify also, there was a need for many of us collectively, whether you want to agree to this or disagree to this for the sake of your own ego, which means that this part of you is unhealed and you didn't use this transit wisely, but there is a need for validation to be seen and considered from who and where it matters most. There's a need for validation to be seen and considered from who and where it matters most to you. And if, if that doesn't happen, that can corrode your sense of self and absolutely your how you show up in your personal and more intimate relationships. Um, think about the fact that, let me just draw this camera out a little further. Think about the fact that Aries rules the self and Libra rules, I just put a little arrow here, sorry. Libra rules relationships, right? Aries rules the self 
And then Libra rules relationships and partnerships. So if Chiron and the North Node, let me zoom in one more time. If Chiron and the North Node are teaching you about um, leadership, about self-identity, about ego, and teaching you that there have been parts maybe stemming from childhood, maybe stemming from um schooling, education, and the need to have all straight A's or B's or high test scores or whatever the case is that has become how you identify, that becomes the perspective, the lens which you see yourself, and then how you project that onto the world, the places, the relationships that you go to validate that existence so that you can feel significant, so that you can feel like you make a difference here on earth within the end of the day that has nothing to do with your purpose and that has nothing to do with your self-worth, that that will show up in your intimate relationships. There's um, this Chiron uh, directly conjunct the North Node. The North Node represents where we are all collectively meant to draw our attention to, where we are meant to pursue, right? And then Mars shows how we are pursuing, how we're pursuing that. So Mars just, again, was transiting through the sign of Capricorn, was showing dedication, determination, commitment. Now in the sign of Aquarius says, I was committed. I was loyal. I took my time. I was hyper-focused on respect. Now I'm taking a step back and I'm looking at the bigger picture. Are there parts of myself that still need to be validated? Are there parts of myself where my leadership has been questioned? Are there parts of myself where I have given up my power? Drawing your attention to Chiron and the North Node conjunct in Aries, you are called to pursue your understanding, your own understanding of balance between the self and your relationships, all relationships. This is also one of those times where you can look at how putting yourself before others all the time is pretty bad, just like always and only thinking about yourself. Sometimes just being on your side, being devil's advocate and being your BFF here, sometimes, you know, to, to give you an excuse here or to to vouch for you a little bit. Sometimes it's not what we're actively choosing. It's the life that we choose for ourselves and how we, I don't want to say felt called to show up, but how there, like if you have a wounded shadow aspect of yourself that is constantly speaking into you, this is what's important to you. This is what you should value. When truthfully, it's not your higher self speaking, it's your shadow self. And you're feeding that internal little monster that we all have. You'll find, if you're not careful, if you don't detach, you'll find that you build an entire life or an entire relationship built on an image or built upon something that you feel is important to you when really what it is is revealing to you a part of yourself that is unhealed. A truth that is that you might have had a difficult time looking at, accepting, um, and or really seeing. And that's, that's real, right? So when all of these transits this week are kind of showing you, teaching you to look out, to be aware, to detach yourself, even from things that are most, in, that you think, just going with emotions, you just kind of go with it as habit. Remember that Aries naturally is on the ascendant. It naturally rules how we identify our ego. So that becomes how the world sees us because that's our instinct, right? Our first reaction without even thinking. So um, that can show up in your relationships because that ends up ultimately being what is that you attract, what you believe that you deserve, and that, you know, if that's how you continue to show up, then ultimately that's what your life ends up looking like, right? But this week is an opportunity for you to dis disconnect from that, detach from that, and be able to minimally be able to see how your own choices, lifestyle, career, health, relationships is um, feeding into this part of you that may need a little bit more healing, right? So again, this could be, um, and by it, I mean Chiron, right? Chiron in the sign of Aries, Mars transiting through the sign of Aquarius, these are the parts of ourselves we detach in order to see how we may over, over give to others, always putting others before ourselves to the point where we're left hungry, invalidated, empty, aching, 
I don't know why the word is disqualified, meaning like you just feel like you ha you can't even like participate in life or participate in relationships, like you're not factored into the equation of relationships. Why? Because people have gotten so used to you putting them before before you even think about yourself. You're a yes man. You show up and you say, yeah, I'll go. Yes, I'll do this. What do you want to do? You don't really think, you don't. You might be scared or hesitant to take your own needs in, into consideration, right? On the opposite side, if you're someone who is constantly thinking about yourself and people are aware that you are selfish, that you're hyper-focused, that you are ego-driven, that you are ego-centered, that you're only leading from your masculine, this too becomes a problem. What we want to do is, if you can, go to the root of where this may be coming from, where this may be stemming from, work to heal it, north node, so that you can have A, more balance, but B, become a better leader, not only for others, but right now for yourself. And collectively, it ends up helping the globe. It ends up helping the world, right? I hope this makes sense. You guys let me know down below. But I do want to tell you that um, this, these types of transits and this type of information, it's absolutely worth exploring and adjusting, okay? So as going back to Mars here, as Mars enters into the sign of Aquarius, you're going to definitely feel that guidance of taking a step back and examining your role in your own relationships and the relationship that you have with yourself. You can also then, Mars is what we decide to chase after, what we decide to pursue. We can then decide to pursue healing and knowledge to help unwind the parts of you that are tightly bound by old ways and thinking. And this is energy that it is that you are now outgrowing. So I want to talk to you a little bit about faded, faded energies here. Faded energies and faded release. Now, hopefully, let me go ahead and move my tarot cards here because I really don't want you guys to miss this. Very, very important that we look at the vertex point sitting in the sign of Scorpio. So let me take a little step back so you can see this a little further. The vertex point sitting in the sign of Scorpio. We have Mercury, again, transiting through the sign of Aquarius. Mercury is in a square with the vertex. Vertex rules the energy of faded encounters in the sign of Scorpio. We also have Saturn transiting through the sign of Neptune. I'm sorry. Yeah, Pisces. Sorry. Um, Saturn transiting through the sign of Pisces in a beautiful trine with the vertex point again in Scorpio. This is highlighting our intuition, but also our emotions, especially our deeper emotions. And Saturn is talking about karma. It's talking about uh, longevity. It's talking about boundaries. And the last thing that I want to draw your attention to is the hyper awareness of Jupiter in the sign of Taurus, directly opposing the vertex in the sign of Scorpio. What we have here is the need to release that which does not serve us. Now, this can highly trigger our sense of stability, what we think, what we, what we value, in the sense of, let's say you value relationships, let's say you value stability. These are the same parts of your life right now that may be going through it. They may be rocky because what was conventional for you, how what was traditional for you, how you always have shown up in the past is now being, uh, I want to say eradicated. That's the first word that comes to my mind. It's not intuitive. That's my word that I'm choosing. So that's not spirit led word. Eradicated is being something is being removed, relinquished and pulled away from your life. I'm seeing this almost like weeding and prune, pruning of things that don't serve you, things that are going to open up the energy for growth, which is what Jupiter rules, right? So there's going to be a, there is growth when it comes to values, relationships, partnerships, tradition, um, and definitely abundance, and definitely marriage, and definitely wealth, and definitely earth energy here. So how sustainability, how we take care of the earth, right? The vertex point though, triggering this is something what we let go of and what we're called to release, what we're called to relinquish, Scorpio energy, is going to be beneficial to us collectively, the greater good, but also our pockets, our planet, our, our investments, our relationships, and the things that is that we, that we carry, that we treasure, right? Also, again, this is going to be karmic. There's going to be a karmic influence here with the, with, um, 
Saturn in this beautiful trine with the vertex point and Mercury is showing where our minds are going. Also, there's a beam of light between Mercury, the planet of communication in Aquarius and Jupiter. So what this is, even though it's a square, that energy is still there's still an exchange here. This energy is hyper focused and enough tension to create um, enough enough tension to make you think about this. Enough tension to draw draw your attention, especially this week again, to what it is that you're feeling called to karmically release. A lot of these connections are things that may have manipulated you especially when it comes to relationships. Um, if there's parts of yourself that are dark and dank, let's say, let's say you're someone who is traditionally pretty positive. You may see that you have negative thoughts about yourself or you may find that you have inner dialogue that can be released that you may not even represent who you are. Remember, Chiron and the North Node transiting through Aries is really hyper, is really working on healing the self and how you identify, how you see yourself, how you show up for the world because that's how you see yourself, right? So you may find that um, you may be on a journey of self-discovery right now and really learning some things about yourself like, wow, yes, I'm a positive person, but I am not kind to myself. Yes, I'm a positive person, but my first thoughts of failure are to say that I'm not good enough, that you didn't go hard enough. My first thoughts um, are that I'm a lover and that I prioritize my relationships, but the truth is is that I, I haven't valued myself within those relationships because I'm constantly putting them before myself to the point where I'm disrespected, disoriented, and I lose myself in them. These are things that, again, uh, the chart and the planets are highlighting right now and it's really a blessing. It can be difficult, but I promise you, honey, I promise you it's a blessing. Okay? And if you're trying to escape all of this, good luck. <laughs> good luck. These are types of transits where people kind of try to bury their head in the sand by totally buying new things to represent like a new quality of life. To Let's say think about someone who's going through a divorce and all of a sudden they are moving away from their relationship of like 20 years and then all of a sudden they start <clears throat> dating someone who's 20 years younger than them. They got a faster car, a high rise apartment. Um, they throw away their clothes. They start going to the gym and all of these things represent a transition, an important transition within themselves. But I wonder how they feel about themselves. I wonder how they, what are the top, what is the, what is the inner dialogue? And for some for some people, they could say, no, I'm good. Like, I'm having the best sex of my life. I'm, I've got all these people in and out. I'm partying. I'm making new friends. But sometimes as human beings, you know, there's a sense of mourning. Where do our thoughts, again, where do our, where do our thoughts in our head go um, when we're not under the influence, okay, lack, for lack of a better word? of all these other things that are distracting us and representing this new journey, this new life. Is it exciting? Yes. Is it revealing? Also yes. Also yes. So if you're wise or if you are someone who is trying to evolve on this earth and help to raise collective consciousness, we would do a little bit more observing and detachment so that we can see the bigger picture so that we're not... Um, you know, just kind of going with emotions and then cr crashing and burning and hurting people along the, along the along the process. And I know that, as I said that, some of you guys actually thought of specific people that have done that or are doing that now. I do want to tell you that this is wonderful because Venus, she's in this beautiful tr uh, sextile with Neptune, and Neptune is in the, almost the final degrees of Pisces, that which it rules. And Venus is feeling really safe, supported, protected, and moving slowly through Capricorn energy right now. You are guided to do the same. This is going to inspire the greater vision that is that you see for yourself, not from this ego-driven place, but from a higher vision, a higher perspective of where it is that you feel called to do or where you feel called to go. This is going to be wonderful, especially all this week is going to be a wonderful time for you to begin to envision even further the greater picture, the greater calling for your life and what this looks like. I have to tell you that for relationships and the relationship with the self, this is an amazing week if you're using it 
for self-growth, for, I don't say self-promotion, but um, really encouraging yourself to be the best version of you that you can possibly be because you are hyper aware. Maybe not hyper aware, but you're aware of the energy that you bring and why you're doing what you're doing. There's a very strong sense of self-awareness here. Now let's go ahead and talk about the 14th. The 14th is Valentine's Day. Again, probably in my mind, one of the more awkward days for Valentine's Day, but I don't make the rules. I'm just following. I'm just following them for now. I do want to say that even though the sun is in the sign of Aquarius for Valentine's Day, which because that's just the season that we're in, um, the, the moon right here, okay, I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom in for you. The moon at the time of me pulling this chart is in skadoosh. It is in the sign of Aries, but it will soon move into the sign of Taurus where we're gonna see a lot of connections with Jupiter and then Uranus. These are going to inspire a sense of indulgence. The the need to, the want to, the encouragement to indulge, to invest, to splurge yourself or people that it is that you love. This is going to go a long way. Even if it's a last minute, a last minute gift that you're getting for your Valentine or for yourself, don't be cheap. It will be noticed. And if you guys need me to make a repostable tweet or something like that, so you can drop hints on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, just let me know. But this is one of those transits where no one needs to be cheap with you and you don't need to be cheap with yourself and you don't need to be cheap with others. Um, when the moon enters into the sign of Taurus and is trans and immediately, almost immediately conjoins with Jupiter and then Uranus, we want to put that money out, right, Jupiter, and, and especially for the element of surprise, Uranus, it goes a long way. Just trust me on this one. I mean, it seems very cliche. Taurus is naturally very romantic. I don't know why Valentine's Day isn't in Taurus. That would be beautiful. I don't know how this happened, but my camera cut out while I was talking. But I was talking about Valentine's Day and how, in my opinion, and let me know down in the comments if you guys can see where I'm coming from with this, that I don't understand why we have Valentine's Day in the sign of Aquarius. Like, I feel that... Uh, the sun being in Taurus, I'm sorry, Valentine's Day being in Taurus season is way more romantic, even more romantic than the sun being in Pisces. That's just me. I, I think because Valentine's Day is the time to celebrate love through displays of effort, um, really going above and beyond. And I think that Taurus... Taurus energy really exemplifies that. Um, if, any, if any of you guys know the history of Valentine's Day and why we celebrated in Aquarius, I would love to hear it down in the comments. Um, anyway, on the 14th though, again, this is a wonderful time, beautiful, and it's not because it's Valentine's Day because if that's the case, sun, sitting, sun transiting through the sign of Aquarius is like literally the least romantic. Do you guys, have you guys ever met in a, a, a romantic Aquarian like... I don't. I haven't. I have, my boyfriend is a uh, sun in Aquarius, but he has Pisces moon, so it kind of balances out, but still to his core. <laughs> like this morning, I just love the fact that he understands that I don't like surprises. This morning, we were sitting out in the yard, and um, he was like, do you think it's romantic to give flowers? And I was like, absolutely, fucking lutely <laughs> Absolutely. And he's like, can I give you a plant? Because I've been doing a lot of gardening lately. He goes, can I give you a plant? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, so that I can add it to my garden. He was like, I think he he feels like, rose, like roses and flowers, they will like just die. Like it's a waste of money. He wants something that can continue to give, which is very thoughtful it, all by itself. And I agree with him. But I also am someone who leaves offerings at my altar of flowers and I also leave offerings at my altar for myself like not only for that which I worship but also for myself so I don't see flowers even though they die it's a it's a it's a testament to thoughtfulness and flowers are beautiful and I love I'm going off on a tangent right now um what I'm trying to say 
is um and now and also keep in mind like I am not traditional I'm not traditional people right I'm not a traditional person because I don't like surprises like if someone surprises me for Valentine's Day like I would prefer to know I don't want to be blindfolded I'd let me know what you how you guys feel but I also I have Venus and Libra but um very much Virgo my I'm I'm Libra um, Virgo, Libra, Cusp, Moon in Virgo, Mars in Virgo, Venus is in Libra. So I, I, I appreciate beautiful things, definitely, but I don't like the element of surprise. Plus, trauma has made me hate surprises. I don't like when things throw me off guard or throw me out of the loop. I want to be prepared, right? Um... But let me know how you guys... Do you guys like surprises? Do you think that roses are not romantic or receiving flowers are not romantic or do you think it's what am I what am I trying to ask do you think it's like romantic to receive flowers or is it cliche because now that I think about it my mom is an Aquarius and she thinks she would be she gets offended by people bringing her roses for Valentine's Day because she feels like it's cliche and it's overdone isn't that crazy <laughs> It just, I don't, I don't understand why people don't see how astrology is a, is a thing when we can see the traits of people. But I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. We'll definitely talk about it down there. Okay. Um, the other thing that I do want to talk to you about is the fact that Pluto just entered into the sign. Let me zoom in because you're not going to want to miss this. Pluto, right here, this letter P, let me move my teacup. This letter P just entered into the sign of Aquarius. Now, although it's hard to see it because it's in the first degrees and we can't f act, uh, efficiently and aesthetically push the P on top of the, the Mars symbol without it looking like discombobulated. And for those of us that are pulling charts, being like, what is this? Like, what is the sign? Um, the P is pushed over here, but that doesn't mean that that's where it is it's actually right here sitting directly underneath mars right on the 14th mars is actually going to conjoin with pluto and what this transit is going to do as a whole looking at the entirety of the chart and not little bits and pieces of it is it's going to highlight to you uh where you stand in relationships right especially when it comes to red flags that you need to be or needed to be very vigilant of not only in others but also in yourself. There is a focus on self-awareness, abuse of boundaries from others but also to yourself. How can you do that? Let's say let's say you I'll use myself as an example. I have a tendency to put my work and how I serve others above how I take care of myself and my responsibilities in my personal life, like how I show up for my friends and my family. And having knowing that that is my a problem of my Mars, Mars in Virgo, I have had to create boundaries inspired by events in my life. I have had to create boundaries to make sure that I'm not overworking myself and overextending myself because I'm wired to do that. I'm wired to overgive. I'm wired to show up when people need me. I'm wired to fix everyone's problems. I'm, you know, all those things. And when Mars conjoins Pluto, this is going to highlight why, for me, right, this would highlight, okay, this boundary that we implemented, that we set into place, it's there for a reason. We want to make sure that we're taking care of that. So I do want to tell you that um, one thing that I, I very much think would be beneficial here is... Um, I think uh, subliminal exercises, right? Going to the root. Now, I, we're, do, we're talking so much about action and what we're giving and what we're doing and how we're showing up. I want to foster and feed and nourish the part of you that is fueling, right? The root. And this is the subconscious. This is the subliminal. This is our shadow self. This is our internal conversation, our internal dialogue. So we want to go ahead and nourish that part. And I think that when Mars conjoins Pluto, whether you're on a date or the days around it, or if you're solo dolo, this is a wonderful time to listen to subliminal exercises, listen to meditation, Anything that will help to feed 
and increase your willpower, your self-love, your courage, your inner strength, and making sure that any type of impoverished parts of your mindset, like you feeling like you're not enough or that you're not deserving, that those things no longer are thriving. We're going to pull them up. We're going to uproot them. We're going to pull them right up and out. Now, moving on to the second portion of this week, this is a wonderful time, actually, to take a pause and to visit the apothecary, <laughs> bahadilife.com, or sign up for body, body Love Notes, pour yourself more tea, take a sip of said tea, because we are really diving into this week. There's just so much information. I just, you guys know I'm so thorough. The tea that it is I'm drinking is an oolong tea, and you'll find it down in my Amazon storefront. Let me make sure that I'm linking that. All the teas that I drink, all the cards that I use, can be found in my Amazon storefront, so you can, if you're someone who supports or shops off of Amazon, maybe doesn't support, but if you shop off of Amazon, you'll be able to receive the benefits of two-day delivery. Okay, so on the 15th, diving into the second portion of this week, on the 15th, Mercury, the planet of communication, this is Mercury right here, is transiting through the sign of Aquarius, remember? And it's going to be in a beautiful sextile with Chiron. We were talking about Chiron earlier, right? Remember we were talking about Chiron earlier. Um, this is going to bring up the elements of healing conversation, but also healing awareness. Let's say the days around this week, because it's not just the 15th that you're going to be feeling this, it's going to be the energy of this week as a whole. Let's say the days around the, uh, around the 15th, specifically hyper-focused on that, you may have some really um, healing, I, not healing ideas, but healing perspectives that almost feel downloaded to you, right? So let's say if you're in relationships or connections that you're just like, wow, this person, this thing, this friendship, this mindset, this practice, it honestly doesn't serve me. This could be a harsh awareness, but when Mercury is in the sextile with Chiron, it's more gentle, it's more kind, it's more forgiving, and it helps to nudge you into being attracted to different things, things that actually serve you for the better. And speaking of attraction, we have Venus, the planet that rules what we are attracted to. It will enter into the sign of Aquarius same day, the 16th, until March 11th. And I want to keep it, tell you to keep an eye out because on the 17th, of February, the, the following day, she's going to conjoin with Pluto. And this is where you'll have a better understanding of where you fall in your relationships by where you feel you're being pull, like pulled into, for example, activities, act, interests, pursuits, and you'll also see the same for others. So this is where you'll see people are where they, where they want to be, especially with Mars transiting through the sign of Aquarius, the sign of detachment, and Venus entering in the sign of Aquarius. People are going to be where they want to be. Now, this can be some tough revelations because shortly after, Mercury is going to square, right? Mercury over here is going to square off with Uranus in Taurus. This is going to potentially create um, challenges for values. You and someone else may not value the same thing. You and your bank account may not value the same things, right? You may want something. There, there could be like a surprise here, something that catches you off guard. This is the messenger meeting with the god of surprise and rebellion. So expect text, surprising conversations, brilliant and even impulsive ideas. This is a wonderful time to get impulsivity um, outside it, out of your system and write it down before this weekend rolls around because for the last and final part of this chart reading for this week, I think that this weekend should be a day or a time for rest, a time for recuperation, a time for regeneration. Sunday specifically needs to be a rest day. I think you should just trust me on this one. Even though you, you I, I do think that you can do like cathartic activities. Like for me, that includes mindless cleaning. But remember, like my, my, my Mars is in Virgo. So that's what I do to feel like I'm in control of my life um, is making sure that my house is clean, making that things are organized or making sure that things are organized. I also love to clean out my purse, like my bag, organize everything, get rid of receipts, crumbs, cookies, snacks, um, sandwich bags, <laughs> bobby pins, 
please tell me that the bottom of my bag and your the bottom of your bag are kind of similar because I honestly look in your bag right now pause this video and let me know what is the most random thing that is in your bag I'll be right back I'm gonna look in mine okay <laughs> no okay I gathered three random things. Try to get, try to guess what they are. You're never gonna be able to guess. First thing, we have seasoned salt, Lowry's, a, a mini, a mini. I can't stand, you know, eating out or when we're eating healthy. You know what I mean? And they don't add a flavor to their food. Like just because it's healthy doesn't mean that it should be flavorless. So I sprinkle just a little bit of Lowry's in there. Speaking of flavor. <laughs> I have habanero ketchup with no high fructose corn syrup. If you guys don't know about this, please get on it. It is fire. Okay, just trust me. These are the random things that were found in my bag, by the way. Okay, I'm... You saw me get up and get it. And then the last random things are... <laughs> <laughs> these tags for the blueberries that I just planted in my garden sharp sharp blue blueberries I did two of them pretty excited about them um, and it's funny too because I, I planted them right next to my roses it says this fruit needs a pollinator and I'm really hoping and setting intention that my roses are gonna do just that because they've been um, drawing in bees They've been drawing in bees lately, and it's been so nice to just kind of sit out there and just watch the bees be active and doing what they do. So those are the random th three things found in my bag. I shared mine, so feel free to share yours. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so for me, again, this, this weekend, Sunday, is going to look like rest for the most part. Um, and picking up the pieces, I think, of this week, because it feels like this week is very active, right? I do think that this is a wonderful time for relationships um, to merge ideas all of this week, but merge your ideas with and your plan and your direction with your partner. That's a wonderful time, a wonderful way to use this time. And although it doesn't feel the most romantic, it kind of is. It's nice to be able to come together and know that you guys are on the same path, like you have same goals or that you're updated on each other's individual goals, right? That's just so beautiful to me. Um, so we definitely have the ability to do that. Uh, I do want to say that um, reducing impulsive shopping or activities that you may regret later is going to be uh, something that you do want to make sure that you're not, that want, something that you want to make sure that you're doing, right? Because... Sunday specifically, the moon is going to be in this really tense square with Neptune. The moon is right here for right now, but it's going to end up being in a pretty intense square with Neptune, and then it's going to go void, of course, which means it's not going to make any aspects. It's not going to make any important aspects to any of the other planets, which is not good for initiating anything because it's almost like it has no purpose to it. It has no direction. I don't want to see this for money, right? I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this energy showing up in your bank account. That's what I don't want. A lot of us are saving, spending, and maximizing our abundance, max maximizing our investments. So this is not the time this weekend to go mindless shopping. You're going to regret it, especially when the moon enters into the sign of cancer later on around 7 p.m., right? That's when that emotion and that regret may kick in, right? Same thing goes for sending emotional texts that you may regret later, right? And then finally, towards the very end of Sunday, the, it's gonna, the moon is going to enter into the sign of Pisces, and I'm sorry, um, Sunday, right, the sun is going to actually entering, I'm sorry, I was still thinking about the moon, the sun is going to enter into the sign of Pisces, and this is going to kickstart Pisces season, and we, again, I said this at the very beginning of this video, but we really are going to need to dive into this together. In my opinion, um, teams win, so let's go ahead and merge for that, there's a lot of information, a lot of deep diving, a lot of sharing, a lot of intuition, a lot of subconscious, a lot of healing, a lot of psychology, a lot of romanticism, a lot of visions, meditations, dreams, those types of things that we're going to be uh, swimming through in Pisces season. 
So make sure that you're sub subscribed and following me on TikTok and or Instagram and definitely here on YouTube channel. Um, we're going to need discernment and boundaries more than ever, especially when we're dealing with these type of energies leading into the transition into Pisces season. Just trust me on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a quick break. I'm going to go ahead and clear out this chart and I'm going to shuffle and pull cards for you guys as I have promised. I will see you shortly. All right, my love. So welcome back to the second portion of today's video. I did clear out the ketchup, the Lowry salt, <laughs> the chart, but I'm going to leave the blueberry tags here. Um, because I just love them right now. They're just giving me so much energy. Maybe for some of you guys, you might want to look into the symbolism of blueberries. Um, that might be something that's significant for you. Also, if you're interested, I created a TikTok. I had it a while ago for my homestead, but I've been adding to it more lately. Um... Uh, what do you call it, like videos, right? Small videos to help people, specifically women, you know? Um, just because I just feel like women, I just, I'm a woman advocate, right? So I just think how wonderful it is for us to be in the garden and working on taking back our power and growing our own food and having our farms, running our farms, running our homestead. I feel like in the past that was something that was notoriously so male-driven and I feel like women, we're just, are we, ugh, I don't want to say this, but like, I just feel like we're natural guardians of the earth and nourishers of the earth and sustainers of the earth. And me personally, that's one thing that I've been really enjoying. But of course, men, I invite you to, to start your own homesteads, your own gardens. But there's just so many groups too that I've joined lately where it's women um, taking back their power through gardening and through teaching and through using power tools and just getting getting their hands dirty you know just doing the damn thing and excelling at it like really excelling at it so if you would like to learn about homesteading even urban homesteading urban gardening that that is definitely a resource for you my tiktok there is jessica x alexandria And it's a um, just another branch off of Queen Bee Homestead, which you guys know has been in the works for years now. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into some readings. The reading, the energy. <clears throat> okay, so the higher font is the first card to jump out. And this has a lot to do with tradition, which is giving me the energy of Uranus and Taurus. Now, this may have to do with non-traditional. Wow, okay, we have two of two of cups, queen of pentacles, and the devil card. The devil card, we always have to be hyper, we always want to be aware of the bonds that we're making and the bonds that we keep, why we keep them. When the queen of pentacles is showing up and the two of cups, it's the bonds that we hold for the sake of the relationship. And the Queen of Pentacles is a natural tender, right? We were just talking about this. She's the gardener, the natural gardener. She's overseeing the garden and produce and making sure that everything is thriving. She rules the earth. Wow. Um, I do want to say this week is I just feel with the chariot card showing up, this has a lot to do with alignment, alignment of intentions and alignment of morals and we did talk about that at the start of this week is how we're moving in align in alignment with what we want and see for ourselves or are we doing this out of a sense of duty and obligation for some of you guys you might have to you feel like you're compromising bits of yourself for the sake of money and resources For some of you guys, certain relationships, we got to evaluate your give and your take. What you're giving to others, what others are taking from you, what others are giving to you, and what you're taking from them. Yeah. Something here with the Four of Cups is highlighting the fact that it might not be in your best interest. Or someone may not appreciate it in the way that they should. Or if they do appreciate it, it's coming in too late. Next few cards, we have Five of Pentacles, Queen of Swords, Reverse, Seven of Wands. Don't let someone take advantage of you because they don't want to do the work themselves. Or they can't 
imagine living life without you because you made life way better just by being in it. I also want to remind you that sometimes karma looks like people having to live without you. That's their karma. Five of Swords, hi, um, the hangman showing up here, Five of Swords is reversed. This is, again, it would be a disservice to you to stay in places where things are not in alignment, where there is no integrity. I don't know if this is a reflection of your own relationships or the relationship that you have with yourself or with money or with your job or with whatever. There's something here that's like, when you know better, you do better. So make sure that if you know better to that, you're actively trying to move forward to doing better and that you're not still kind of hiding behind. Well, I didn't know. You did know. You did know. You just chose not to. Or if this is not you, this could be someone else. Now, in the future, it's interesting because we have four of swords and the nine of pentacles showing up. And this is in the future connected to two of cups, queen of pentacles and the devil card. So... Of course, for some of you guys, I see this as allowing, taking a step back and not having to constantly be moving things with your will, your, your desire, your drive, your ambition, allowing, let's say if you're someone who's always showing up in masculine energy and everyone else is kind of like just getting in the passenger seat and just going where you want to go, this is one of those times where it's like, well, it's good for you to kind of take a step back and see what happens when you're not driving. Who else is going to take the lead and what happens? Where do you just, where do they decide to go? And vice versa. Instead of allowing someone else to take the lead, this is where you just, where you um, stand in your power and say, you know what? I refuse to engage in this. I am actually going to, this is what I think we should do. This is where I want to grow. This is what I would like to, what I see for us. This is what I have found. And then I think you'd be pleasantly surprised, especially with the Nine of Pentacles. But let me clarify. Yeah, Queen of Wands just wanted to jump out. She's the card of empowerment. Seven of Cups, Ace of Cups, Emperor reversed. Nine of Cups again. Wheel of Fortune reverse and Ace of Pentacles. It's so interesting because I want to tell you that someone here, you may be trying to fight karma. You may be trying to fight the turn of events that's going to happen inevitably. You're, you might be trying to control the outcome. And this is one of those things where manifestation happens when you're not controlling every part of the journey. You end up hurting yourself, you know, when you can't really allow the universe to... You end up kind of slowing things down when you don't allow the universe to do what it is that it is going to do, especially if you've already set intention. I'm surprised that the Magician card hasn't shown up yet. Wow. Okay. The reason why is because something's already in the works here. Um, you may have already manifested something. It's just coming to fruition. Ten of Pentacles and the Temperance card. Sometimes... Um, when things start happening after you set intention, we I actually just made a post about this. Um, things start falling away when we start setting intention because, not because we're being punished or not because the shit's hitting the fan, but because things are beginning to fall together. And I wonder if you can trust that process and that journey right now. It's really going to allow someone to show up in full. And that person can be you or it could be those that you want in your life. There's the, those that deserve to be in your life. Let me shuffle for the oracle. This card really wants to. Yep. Trust in the magic. Trust in the magic. This card for sure, but I'm going to have a hard time getting it out. Wow. Magic works through you. Yeah. So this is exactly, okay. Think about the temperance card and the hanged man here. This is how the universe works through us, is by giving it the space. Thank you for, for um, whoever just placed an order with me. I don't know if you guys heard that. The apothecary is opened up, by the way. But um, this is giving the universe the space, the time to work things out, okay? And you not trying to control how things work themselves out. Okay, emphasis on them the universe working things out and not you working them out. I also feel for some of you guys, patience. Patience is so needed. Wow. And then the next card that jumped out is set healthy boundaries. 
and one last card this and that are true it did come out reverse though so I want to tell you um, try not to figure out what's going to happen next especially remember we have the realm the element of surprise engulfing the entirety of this week let's allow things to unfold and shape themselves in the way that they will because that just honestly I, if you don't trust it then just trust me that's that's going to be for the highest and greatest good here i i genuinely promise that okay so my loves wow um i do Thank you so much for joining me for this reading. We won't be- Sorry about that, honeybees. My camera overheated, but it's okay because it's giving me a chance to show you a little bit more up close and personal in depth of the cards that it is that we pulled. Thank you guys again so much for joining me on this astrology and tarot and an intuitive journey. I do encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already, especially again, because when we're entering into Pisces season, there's going to be a lot of information and downloads that I think we should collectively vibe together and collectively contribute to each other, right? So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Bahati Life. There's only one of me and I will link my um, URL codes down below so that you're not following an imposter. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.